the TI-30XS. It has to be that exact model or they will not let you take it in. Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to do math because I actually got a, a uh, comment on what to expect for the math test. So I have taken this test but I did not pass it. I failed it by six points and uh, I've been studying and I'm gonna retake it again this month but I'll tell you guys what I know. So, in the same book that I showed you in the last two videos, the mathematical reasoning is on page 409. It's just going to be pretty much similar, not completely similar, but close to it, to the other tests. It's different in the fact that on this test, you do not have to write an essay. There's not going to be a single question where you have to give a written answer or an essay on the math test. Now, it is longer. The math test is 115 minutes long. This part I thought was really useful because math is the bane of my existence. <laughs> it's just bad. <laughs> on the first five questions of the math test, you have to do them on your own and they're usually like division or a multiplication of a decimal or it's usually something on the easier side that will be in the first five questions that you have to do without a calculator now after those five questions the entire rest of the test you are allowed to use your calculator this is the calculator that you're allowed to use on the test and this is the only calculator you're allowed to use. No other model or anything like that. It's the TI-30XS. It has to be that exact model or they will not let you take it in. Once again, if you haven't seen my other videos, um, this is specifically for the state of Texas. So for all I know in California they have a different calculator and then this wouldn't apply to you. But I got it for 20 bucks at Home, De Home Depot. Office Max or Office Depot. I can never remember which one is which. <laughs> and it's been extremely useful because I get to use it in class when we're working on problems and it's really useful when you're working at home trying to figure out something then you can check yourself with your own calculator but I would suggest to get the calculator and you know it's got the little references inside but I would I would strongly suggest to get it it's helped me a lot because there are certain types of math equations that I probably could not do without that calculator. Now back to the test itself, um, it also, like the other tests, include uh, multiple choice, fill in the blank, drop down, hot spot, and drag and drop items. Now I don't think fill in the blank were in the other ones, but really all it is is there will be a question that'll say something along the lines of um, to simplify an expression that contains parentheses use the blank to remove the parentheses and the blank would be distributive property now that's not exactly what it would be like that's just a sentence here out of the uh, off of one of the pages out of the math book but it'll have a question and it will more than likely have an equation and it'll say to solve this equation you need to use such and such or blank and blank to get the answer and it'll it'll either give you some choices or you just have to actually know the name of the problem now the content for this test is numbers and operations 
geometry and data analysis, algebra, and functions. Algebra is the hardest for me. I know a lot of people who have issues with algebra. It's one of those things where you throw in letters to the problem and you got letters and numbers all mixed together and it gets real confusing. But that's what I have troubles with anyways. You may not. Good for you. But it's confusing to me. <laughs> Sometimes. The questions it says are 45% quantitative problem solving, 55% algebraic problem solving. And there is a bunch of algebra on there. When I took it and failed it, uh, when I looked at my score, it shows you what you did good at, and it'll show you where you're still having problems. And my problem was algebra. So that's what I've been practicing on. So that's another one of those things, you know, don't freak out if you fail it because at least you know what you need to work on. The questions are also conceptual understanding, procedural skill and fluency, reasoning skills. All questions are aligned to the GED assessment targets uh, content indicators, which I'm not even sure what that is. I've never heard anyone at the school talk about that. It may be referring to the GED practice test. That would be my best guess there. But no one's ever mentioned that to us in any of my classes, so this is really the first time I've ever heard of it. <laughs> and 30% of the questions aligned to the mathematical practice standards. So pretty much what you do in your book or in your class. There's not too much advice I can give for the math test because math is my domain of significance and if you go to classes you will hear that they uh, when you when you go in you take a little practice test and it's not a pass or fail thing what it is is they need to know what uh, skill level you're at they need to know where you're at with your math with your language language arts social studies and science and so those tests you can't fail it or anything they just need to know where you're at so they can place you in the proper class now whatever you're the worst at is your domain of significance your DOS and you will get a folder when you start class of whatever particular subject you're bad at obviously my DOS pack was math and you you know you just get a little folder with a whole bunch of math work pushed into it <laughs> and it's a little different in every class but in my class the first hour we worked or 30 minutes it depended on what we were scheduled to do in class that day but for the first bit of class we would work individually on our own and our DOS packets and uh, even though I hated it with the passion, it was useful because I had no choice. It's not like I could work on anything else. It was either just sit there and do absolutely nothing and make it worse for yourself or at least try to do your math. So that was useful. Uh, I have it right here, but I don't know if I still have my actual DOS stuff in it. No, none of it's in there. I must have... <laughs> I probably threw it away once I was out of that class. Now, something else to talk about. Um, I know I really quickly went over it in my first video, but I don't think I went into detail about changing classes. Something that I did was I took my language arts, my social studies, and my science test, and I, once I passed all of those and uh, all I had was math, I changed classes uh, specifically to a math class where, or having a math tutor where all we would do is math because when you're in your class you work on all four subjects. It's not usually all of them in one day, usually it's social studies and language arts and then the next day it's science and math because those two things are more similar to each other. But um, you do work on every subject in your main class, 
Now, once you get everything else out of the way, you could switch over to another class for whatever subject you need and work with that tutor. And it's always a small class. When I first went into my uh, math tutor class, it was me and three other girls. And uh, eventually it became me and one other girl. So right now it's just me and one other girl. And we're the only ones that show up. So it's really useful because then you get more one-on-one -on -one time with the teacher. It's easier that way because instead of having to try and help four different people on four different levels of math, there's only two people on two different levels of math. <laughs> but other than that, I don't have much more. And, you know, not even all of that was ad advice for math. Um... I'm not the best one to give advice for math because it's such a hard subject for me, but I can tell you if you're anything like me and you struggle with math a lot, it's going to get harder before it gets easier, that's for sure. Don't give up. You can do it. I've been there. It sucks, I know, but you started getting your GED for a reason. There's a reason you wanted to get it, and there's a reason you grew the balls to walk up in there and take that practice test to get in a class. So if you started it, you can finish it. I'll tell you the very first time I was in GED classes, I didn't want to be there, and I didn't have a reason to get my GED. I didn't have any incentive, so I ended up quitting my classes. Now I've got an incentive, and I've got goals, and I know what I want to do, and I have reasons. But that doesn't always mean it'll be easy. <laughs> I've seen many people in my class that have just flat out stopped coming, or they come to class, but they don't even really try anymore because they get so frustrated with themselves for not being able to understand that you know, they break down and cry in class or they just walk out in the middle of class and sometimes they don't ever come back. So don't let that happen to you because it'll be worth it once you've got it. I'm going to be so freaking excited once I pass that dang math test and I will make a video when I pass that dang math test. So just, just don't give up. Um, that's actually my best advice for the math test. Just don't give up. It's going to be hard, and you're going to feel like crap if you take it and you fail it. But remember what I say in every video. If you fail it, at least you know what to look for. So, no big deal. It gives you the upper hand for the next time when you go to take it. So, I think that's it. <laughs> oh, I'm so random. I know this video wasn't too helpful and I'm sorry, but if you liked it, leave a like <laughs> and subscribe. After I am done with the next video, which will be about science, I'm going to start making random silly fun videos. And then of course, you will get a video once I've passed my math and I've received my GED certificate. I, I know what I want to do once I get my GED. So once I get my GED and I can start that process, I will start making videos about that also. So it'll be really exciting and I know you may not think so now, but I promise it'll be fun. Eventually. <laughs> so I guess that's it for this video. Once again, I'm sorry it wasn't as informative as the others, but I don't know what to tell you. It's not my thing. It's my domain of significance for a reason. <laughs> Alright, peace out, Home Biscuit Skillets. I'll see y'all in the next video. One more thing that I forgot, guys. Something that I used to get ready for my math test, which did help me some was I got on YouTube 
and I went to Math Antics. Look them up. It starts at really low levels and it goes up pretty, pretty uh, high. So, yeah. YouTube, use it. It's a good, good um, study friend there. Mm -hmm. Told you so. Peace out.